The next step after you get your car is called de-icing. Okay, I'm using an acronym here, and I'll just let you in on a few of those. When I say EV, I mean an electric vehicle. Same thing with BEV, battery electric vehicle. When I say the term ICE, what I mean is an internal combustion engine. That's what drives your typical gasoline or diesel vehicle. So our first step here is going to be taking off all the components that are in that gasoline related system. But before we do that, let's take a look at what a Geo Metro looks like when it still has its original engine, transmission, gas tank, all those things. And then we can identify those parts, decide what things we need to take out, what things we can keep, what things we want to sell, and make our money back on what we paid for the car in the first place. To do that, we're going to go over to my brother-in-law's place where he just happens to have a Geo Metro, almost exactly like mine, only still running on gas. Now before we start taking all the combustion engine components out of the car, let's first identify those, see what those all look like, what they do, what things we might be able to pull out. Now since my car is already converted to electric, what we're going to do is use the stunt double here. Uh, this car is a Gen 2 Geo Metro. It's a five speed with a three cylinder engine. So it's basically the same make, model, and options as the car that I've already converted. So let's take a look at some of the parts on this one to start with. Another thing you're going to want to do is to use a tape measure and just measure uh, the distance between the road and some fixed part of the car right above the tire. Just measure up to the fender and mark down that number. That way, uh, depending on the weight of the batteries that you add, where you put them in, you want to be able to get as close to that number as you can later so that the car is as close to stock as it can be. Now you might have to modify the suspension to make that all work, but we'll cover that a little later in this video. Now in any car, you're going to find some information inside the door frame. So if we just open the car, Right in here, you're going to see a tag, and on there is going to be the information about uh, tire pressure, where your car was made. But what we're really looking for here is information on the car's weight, its gross vehicle weight, and its cargo and person uh, carrying capabilities. And what we want is just to make sure that the car is going to have the capability to carry the additional weight of the batteries and components that we're going to be adding. So if you take a look at the weights that are on here, you just want to make sure that the weight of your battery pack is going to fit within the limitations of the vehicle. And for example, on this car, it says that it's uh, uh, maximum load in pounds is 688 for the occupants plus the cargo. So we're going to want to make sure to have a battery pack that weighs less than that. And then of course, uh, netting in removing of the other components such as the uh, the engine, the gas tank, and other items like that. Now here's something else we're not going to need. The uh, gas tank, gas cap, um, we're not going to have a gas tank on here so we can remove this and put this to other better uses such as putting our charging port right there. Now this car is a hatchback and there's a couple of things that I really like about that. One is that it does give you a lot of potential cargo room. You really can fit a lot in here. The back seat flips down, and we've got a lot of room to be able to work with here. Now also in the back of this car, there's a cover that we flip up, and that's normally where the tire and jack would go, but there's a fair amount of room. So if we take out the jack and spare tire, we have space that potentially could be used for batteries, it could be used for a battery charger, or a lot of other potential uses in an electric car. Uh, so again, this is some space that we might find real handy. Now under the hood of the car, there's a lot of things that we probably don't need anymore, but if they work perfectly well, the best thing you can do is take them out and sell them, help pay for the project. In my case, uh, just pulling out the engine and a few other components paid for the car itself. Uh, a lot of the main things we can see right here uh, to start with is the car's original 12 volt battery. We're gonna keep that because that's still going to run the headlights, the brake lights, your radio, all of those sorts of things. Now the Metro has a very small radiator, it's just right here, and we're not going to need that at all. So we can remove that and sell it. The engine itself, in this case it's a three cylinder, um, runs, pull it out, sell it. Um, we can either pull that out by itself or we can remove it at the same time as the transmission. The transmission we're going to keep and reuse. Now there's really not a whole 
heck of a lot of other things up here. Uh, up here, we've got the brakes. We're going to keep all that, except that is power brakes. So we're going to have to figure out a vacuum for making the power brakes work. Um, then coming off of the engine, we've got the exhaust components. All of that's going to come off as well. So once again, just a little overview of the engine compartment. We've got the windshield washer motor, the air cleaner for the engine, uh, exhaust manifold. All, that, all of this is coming out. Brake system, original battery, radiator. Uh, remember that we're going to want to keep our uh, windshield washer fluid. Uh, down here is for coolant. We're not going to be using any coolant anymore, so that can come out as well. And another thing you're going to want to check for is any known issues in your particular vehicle. Now, it's known that in Geo Metros, they're a unibody design, and often this part right here will rust through. This is just in front of where the drive shaft for the front wheels goes through. Uh, this part of the frame is known to rust. So in my case, when I had the engine and transmission out of the way, I started poking that real hard with the screwdriver. And even though it didn't look bad from the outside, it was completely rusted from the inside. And on my car, that did need some repair there that uh, required some welding. Fortunately, my friend Tim is a nice small guy, and we just put him in there and had welded up, put some black paint on there, and we were ready to roll again. Now another thing we should consider right now is how we end up mounting the finished motor and transmission. Here we can see the original engine mount. This is on the passenger side of the car towards the front. And that mount is a metal and rubber contraption that connects to the frame of the car from the engine. So right now we'll just want to keep in mind that we're going to somehow use that to hold up the motor. Now the other two mounts for this vehicle, one is right in the back. Uh, one of the other engine mounts is right down here in the middle back. Now that's actually on the transmission, not the engine. And since we're reusing the original transmission, uh, we're really not going to have to modify that. Uh, and the third mount is also on the transmission, uh, pretty much straight below the battery. Now another thing we want to think about here is what we have for room to work with inside the car for adding gauges, instrumentation, any of those sorts of things that we need. Uh, this is a pretty small car so we don't have a lot to work with. Uh, the original radio was removed so you could put some gauges in there. Um, I love having a radio so I would replace that. There's a little bit of extra room underneath it that's usable. There's an ashtray. I'm not a smoker so we could take that out. We do have the cigarette lighter. And one thing we want to do is use a multimeter to test the cigarette lighter to see if that has power always on or if it's only on when the key's on. And that's the sort of thing that we could actually then use as a source of power for sort of the master on off for our car. We also have just a real basic cup holder down at the bottom. That's not really good for too much. So also right there might be a great spot for a gauge or two. Now this car has both a airbag in the steering wheel and one over on the passenger side. When we're done with the conversion, the airbags are still going to work and function properly. So we can't have anything in the way in front of either one. We potentially could still put uh, maybe a gauge cluster uh, back on the top of the dashboard. Or another possibility is to do something on the pillar on the side here. You can get uh, little display gauge holders from hot rod mail order places. So that's another possibility there too. Now while we're digging around under the hood, we should be thinking about how we turn the car on and off. And in a gasoline car, a uh, spark goes into the engine through these spark plug wires. And if we follow those back, we see a distributor and a cable that provides the power to that. We follow that back, we get to this doohickey here. And then if we follow it to these, these are little 12 volt wires that only put out 12 volts when the car has the key in it to the on position. So if we want just sort of a master on off switch for our electric vehicle, these wires right here are perfect to use for that. So we'll take out the engine, we'll get rid of that, but uh, we'll keep these wires here and we can tap into those for our master on off switch. Now another thing you want to do is check the overall uh, body and mechanical soundness of the vehicle. For example, I just put a mirror down on the ground 
for an easier view up underneath the car. And we can see here there's quite a bit of rust on that rocker panel. Now the rest of the underside of the car is actually pretty good, but uh, we want to watch out for rust because when we're doing an electric car, uh, really it's the body itself that, of, of the car that we're, we're buying here. Um, the electrical motor system is going to last forever. We're going to have this car for a long time, so we want to make sure that we start off with something decent. And that may mean being a little more picky about uh, what kind of condition the body of the car is in. Now, when I got my Metro, it did have a little bit of rust on the rocker panels, but really not too bad, especially considering that in my area, we use a lot of salt on the road in the winters, and um, rust is, is pretty much inevitable, but we do want to minimize it. So here we're looking at the front of the car. I put a mirror on the ground just to give you a little better view. From down there, we can see the oil filter. We're definitely not going to need that. In fact, once we're done converting a car, it's never going to have the oil changed again, ever. Right next to it, we can see the exhaust pipe coming out of the engine. Uh, we're going to remove the exhaust pipe, the muffler, and the entire exhaust system. And actually, that tunnel where it goes down the middle of the car is a great place to run all our power cabling later. Uh, right here is an upside down view of that third mount. That's the one that connects from the transmission to the driver's side of the vehicle. Uh, we're going to keep that and reuse that, but as we take the transmission out, we'll just need to temporarily remove that. Often one of the first things we think of in an electric vehicle conversion is that we're no longer going to need the muffler. We're also not going to need the exhaust pipe, the catalytic converter, or any other of that hot, rusty, loud stuff on the car. Now that we've taken a look at all the internal combustion elements, let's start ripping them out. Here's some YouTube videos of me removing the engine and the gas tank from my Geo Metro. So as you can see, I'm now draining the gas tank, and it, uh, well, I was just trying to empty the, uh, the little hose that I just cut, but apparently I'm emptying the gas tank. I don't know how, but somehow it, it's siphoning out of the top and it's not stopping, so, uh, my whole garage explodes, uh, goodbye everybody! I found a little tiny bottle marked corks, and sure enough inside, there's, a. Uh, little tiny corks so I'm gonna see if I can find one of these if I can find a little tiny cork that'll uh, stop that okay I think I've taken off everything that holds the gas tank onto the car so now we're gonna lower it and uh, hopefully it'll come right off <laughs> 